So you're ready to drip content to your students in Thinkific, but you don't know where to start with all the different features available to you. In this video, we will look at how you can use the drip feature in Thinkific. If you haven't yet watched the video of what is drip content, the link is in the comments below. So start there. Let's have a look at how you can drip content into Thinkific. Hi, my name is Kat Sabello from The Stellar Way. This is a YouTube channel for you and all the other course creators to learn how to design, create, and launch your online course. So today we're looking specifically at how to drip content in Thinkific. If you don't use Thinkific or you're not sure what your learning management system is that you will be using, following along in this session will still help you to understand how systems and how platforms drip content to students. So you can start to get a grasp of what the feature involves. Now again, if you haven't yet created your curriculum or if you haven't created your modules, in the comments below is a link to my course curriculum template so you can start to design that. And if you haven't yet watched the video of the two different types of drip content, start there. As a short recap, two different types of drip content that I call drip content is the course creator controlled method or the student behavior controlled method. That's what you'll learn more about in the video that's linked below. Very shortly, the, the course creator controlled method is when you set a specific date and the student behavior one is when the student completes something, they move on. So let's have a look at how we can set up those two in Thinkific. And let's specifically start with the course creator method. So here I am in my Thinkific account. Now this specifically is my Thinkific account. That's just a test account. So let's go through this um, however we wish. I'm going to just go back here to my courses. So when you are ready to create your drip content, the drip feature sits within the course. So here I have three different courses. I'm going to go into this one that's published and we'll have a look at that. So the first method is the course creator controlled method. Now, this is course creator controlled method because it means that you as the course creator is, are controlling how content is dripped to students. Specifically, it is in regards to that you control when they see new content. It has no relation to what they do in your course. It's all up to you. So to do that, we go into our course and we click the button drip. Now, Everyone would see the strip content, but if you don't have a paid version, you won't be able to do anything in here. If you do have a paid version, you'll see this, or you might already have a drip that exists. So here we're going to click on create a drip schedule. Now there are many things along the left hand side here, many options. They are basically two things to do. The first thing is to decide what your drip type is. And then the second one is to set your drip schedule for all of your modules. So all of these words here are my modules. So over my curriculum, so that we can see that in my curriculum, you will see that the words we just saw are all of my modules or here in Thinkific, all of my chapters. So if we come back over here, there's two things I'm going to be doing. First, selecting my drip type and then assigning a drip schedule to each lesson within a chapter. Now remember, I said that there's two different drip types, course creator controlled or student behavior controlled. They are the methods, the different method types. This is the different drip type for the course creator method. So here we have dates, three different types of dates you can select from. And this section, it says, when will the course content be released? Basically, this means when will the drip schedule be triggered? Will it be triggered by the enrollment date, which means the date that the student enrolls, that will then trigger the drip schedule to begin? Or is it based on the student course start date? So when they first enroll and start the course? Or if you have live sessions and maybe you have a course that happens every quarter, so once every four months, you might have a specific start date where the course begins and from that date, course is uh, content is then released. So for example, 
you might say that a student enrolls today and they have access to content every seven days. Or maybe from the student course start date, whenever they start the course, they then have access every seven days from that start date. Or maybe you say on a specific start date, so we're going to start our course on the 14th of February, and then content is released to a student every seven days or every 30 days. You might say every week, every month, whatever terminology you use here in Thinkific, you can set them as days. So let's use this example here on a specific date. And I'm going to type in here the 14th of February next Monday. And from that date, content is then going to be released to students. So here I can go through each one of my lessons that sit within these chapters and schedule the date that the students will have access to it. Now, as I've set this as the 14th, we would see that everything here is the 14th and I will go in and manually change those. If I want it as a specific date, so let's go back up here. I'm going to change this to course start date, for example. Here I might say that as, as a student starts the course, they would first see how to use this template and then welcome to this course, these different chapters. And so I'm going to keep them as zero days because they have access to them on the date of their enrollment. Or sorry, on the date that they start the, the course. And then for all the modules after that, so when they went out to chapter one, uh, for these, this chapter, I want them to have access seven days after. So I just simply type in seven. Now I'm going to copy that using my control copy and press my tab key. For me, it's easier to press my tab key so that I can move down to the next one. You can simply type this in here and type the date. So in my next chapter, then, if I say that the students have access every seven days or once a week, then my next one is 14 days and we go in these increments. So let me just copy this again. We can click Control C or Command C and then I just paste this in. As simple as that. Now I'm up to my chapter two. So then that's going to be 21 days and so on and so forth. So as we saw here, I have student cut course start date or student enrollment date and both of those have these days in here. If I use on a specific date, then I set the specific date. So I can go ahead and save that. And you will notice that once you save it and you try to change it, you do have a warning that if you change it, everything will be cleared. So be careful with that one. This is why I recommend that you do set all of this up in your course curriculum template that you know what your schedule would look like. So then when it comes to putting it into Thinkific, it's just a matter of looking at your schedule that you've already created and typing it in. So you don't risk losing anything or playing around with everything here. Okay, so that was the course creator controlled method. Now let's have a look at this student behavior controlled method. That one is not here in the drip. That one is over here in each lesson. So in each of your lessons, again, if you have a, a paid version, you will see an option down the bottom to say, make this a prerequisite. So when you click that, you would then see that this prerequisite key comes up. And now that means that a student cannot move on to the next chapter until they have completed these lessons. So here in this chapter, if all of them are prerequisites, they can complete these lessons in any order they wish, but they cannot move on to the next chapter until they have completed all of them. Now with this, you can set the specific language that you want the students to see, which is in your settings. You can click, uh, click on this button that pushes you to your settings. And that is the settings of your platform, not your settings of the course. So here we're in settings and in prerequisites here, you can customize that to whatever you wish. Now that's customizing the content that a student would see when they try to progress to a lesson without completing their prerequisites. So we can see here that it simply says prerequisites have not yet been completed. And you can change that to whatever you wish. 
Now, when you change it here, you will be changing it for all of your courses. You cannot change the terminology only for one course. Okay, so back over here in my course, when you go in to preview this, this is important. When you go through to preview either as course enrolled as a student or any of those options, you can still progress through these. The reason for that is that Thinkific's not restricting you to what you can see because you're enrolled as a course admin. So you can move through this however you wish. What you can, however, see is you can see the word prerequisite. So you know that your, re your prerequisites have been um, configured because you can see this word here. If you want to see it exactly as a student, then I recommend you enroll as a student that's completely not connected to you as your course admin, so a completely different email address, and log in as a student and you would see how the student would see it and make sure that that also meets your requirements. Now this is the prerequisites, which means that a student needs to complete a lesson before they can move on to the next lesson. So that's based on their user behavior. There is one final thing that we can do, either prerequisites or you can also set courses, sorry, quizzes. So I have a quiz here. In your quiz, down the bottom, you can set quizzes to prerequisites, but you can also set quizzes to a passing grade. So maybe you have each chapter has uh, lessons that are not prerequisites, but the student cannot progress until they have completed this quiz. So you can say that it's 80%. Okay, so if you were to say this, this quiz requires a passing grade and that passing grade is 80%. If you keep it like that, then the student can continue however they wish to different chapters but they cannot complete the whole course until they complete this quiz. So if you don't want students to move to next chapters, then you simply mark this as a prerequisite. Okay, so you can use one or the other or both. So to recap, if you only have the passing grade as a quiz, it means students can still progress into other chapters, but cannot complete the entire course until they get this passing grade. If you don't want them to progress to new next chapters, make this as a prerequisite. Because in this chapter, any lesson that's a prerequisite will stop the students from moving to the next chapter until it is successfully completed. Okay, that is everything from me today. It's quite quick and simple to add all of that into Thinkific, especially when you are already aware of the different types of drip content that are available to you and the different types of methods that you can use. So remember, watch the video that's in the link in the comments that talks about the two different methods of drip content so that you can decide if you're going to do student behavior or if you're going to do course creator controlled methods. And then once you've made that decision and you have it designed in your curriculum, it's very easy to then just recreate that and pop it into Thinkific. If you do have any questions about drip content in this specific video, add them into the comments. If you do want to see something else demonstrated in Thinkific or have any question around course creation, let me know in the comments below and I'll be happy to create a video for you. And until next time, happy course creating. Bye for now.